نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم اما بعد سم نيمز ار ان اردو سم نيمز ار ان عربيك سو دونت ٹرن دم انتو انگلش جسٹ ایز وی ایکسپیکٹ دا نيمز ان انگلش نوٹ ٹو بی ٹرن انتو اردو اور عربيك سو لندن ول ريمين لندن So when you are speaking in English, you will not say London, you will say London. The same goes with Urdu as well. There are so many people who are changing the pronunciation of the names. And when you change the pronunciation of the names, the meaning changes or meaning doesn't remain. Instead of saying Ismail, Ishmael. Now when you write I-S-M-A-I-L, where does Ish comes from? There is no H. S-H. I-S-M-A-I-L. Ismail. And the very people who say Ishmael, when they read the Quran, and when the name of Ismail alayhi salatu wassalam comes, they will all read Ismail. So it's very simple. Ibrahim. And when we read Durud-e Pak, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama sallaita ala Ibrahim. Nobody will say ala Ibrahim. It's the same name. So don't change names. Names have a very great significance in our deen. Our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has given many instructions in, in regard to naming children. مَنْ وَلِدَ لَهُ وَلَدٌ فَلْيُحْسِنْ إِسْمَ If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants one a child, then he should give that child a good name. سَمُّ بِأَسْمَعِ الْأَنْبِيَا Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Give your children the names of the Anbiya alayhi wa sallatu wa sallam. And there are incidents in the ahadith wherein we find that our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam changed the name of certain people. That shows the importance of names. There was a lady or there was a girl whose name was Barra. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no, change that name to Zainab. So one thing we all need to do is, the, very, the first thing we all need to do is choose good names for our children and our grandchildren. Why we refer to ulama or mashayikh or pious elders for names is so that we don't make a wrong choice. Because sometimes a name sounds good. But behind that name there is no significance. Sometimes a name is very new. But again, behind it there is no significance. And a name may be very common. It may not sound very nice. Fatima. We've been hearing the name Fatima for years and years. So Fatima is very old name. But there is a very great significance behind that name. Sometimes we look at the name. We look at the meaning of the name. Meaning. For example, Sajid. Sajid means the one who prostrates. I want to name my son Sajid so that the meaning of the word Sajid will have an effect and he will become the one who will prostrate frequently. Now in, in, in history, if you look for Sajid, you don't find a great Sahabi with the name of Sajid or a great Wali with the name of Sajid. So here, the aim behind giving the name Sajid is the meaning. And sometimes you give a name not because of the meaning of the, the name but because of the personality who was after whom you are naming your child.
For example, Ibrahim and Ismail, many people may not be able to understand the name of Ibrahim and Ismail. But you give the name Ibrahim or you give the name Ismail with this in mind, that inshallah my child will become like Ibrahim alayhi salam, the great Nabi. My child will become like Ismail alayhi salam. So, when choosing name, we have to be very careful, number one. And after that, once we have chosen a good name for our child, then we must make sure that we call our child with that name. We don't spoil the name. We don't shorten the name. Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr. So, the name given to a child the name Abu Bakr is given to a child with this in mind, that inshallah this child will have the qualities of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. So whenever we call this child or whenever we talk about this child, we should always say, Abu Bakr was here, Abu Bakr is a very good boy, Abu Bakr is very intelligent boy, Abu Bakr please come here. Now, instead of Abu Bakr, where is Abu? We have named him after the great Caliph Abu Bakr. And now we are spoiling the name. <coughs> By removing Bakr, it is not the name of Abu Bakr Siddiq Radhi Allah no anymore. Yes, sometimes out of love. Sometimes out of love. You will say, Abu, come here. That's okay. But you don't change the name altogether. That he becomes brother Abu and he becomes uncle Abu and he becomes father Abu and Bakr is never to be heard. So we should give good names and we should call people with those names. We should give good names and we should call people with those names. My nephew who passed away a couple of years ago, Umar Farooq. Now normally whenever we have somebody who, who is given two names, then people either take the first name or the second name. So either he will be known as Umar or he will be known as Farooq. Not Umar Farooq. So I think my father chose the name Umar Farooq. I can't remember exactly. But I can remember that this discussion came up in the family that if we give him the name Omar Farooq, people will either call him Omar or Farooq. So my father at the time said, it depends on the family. It depends on what we choose to do. If the family calls him Omar Farooq, everybody will be compelled to call him Omar Farooq. And he is known as Umar Farooq by everybody. Nobody used to call him by Umar only or Farooq only. Umar Farooq. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive him and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate his status in Jannah to Firdos. He passed away at a young age. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala console his parents also. And I remember my brother-in-law when he was young, Umar Farooq, that whenever somebody would say Umar or Farooq, he would point out to them that his name is not Omar, his name is Omar Farooq. Or his own name is not Farooq, his name is Omar Farooq. So give, give good names. Use those, those names in full. Now Abdullah. Abd means servant, Allah means Allah. So Abdullah means the servant of Allah. Abdullah means the servant of Allah. Now the Abdul, the lam at the end is part of Allah, not part of the Abd, Allah. When you join together, Abdullah. Now when we say Abdul, it means nothing. Abdul. But that is what we do. Abdullah, Abdul. Where is Abdul? But Abdul means nothing. 
So Abdullah, the servant of Allah. And if for argument's sake that Abdul does mean something, then Abdul means servant. Just servant, plain servant. Abdul, servant. No, Abdullah, what a beautiful name. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ahabbul asma'i ilallah, Abdullah wa Abdul Rahman. The most beloved names to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are Abdullah and Abdul Rahman. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided us to give our child one of the most, most beautiful names in his court and we spoil that name and we say Abdul. And sometimes we become guilty in the court of Allah, we become sinful in the court of Allah because instead of saying Abdul Rahman, we say Rahman. Rahman is the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is exclusively for him. So to call somebody Rahman, similarly to call somebody Ghaffar instead of Abdul Ghaffar, to call somebody Sattar instead of Abdul Sattar, it is not permissible. So imagine a person given the name of Abdul Rahman, which is one of the most beautiful names to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, most beloved names to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that person is being called Ar-Rahman, Rahman, 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 from morning till evening, how many times? And how many people are committing sins as a result of this person? And nobody points out to people that please call him Abdul Rahman. Please call him Abdul Satta. Please call him Abdul Ghaffar. Don't call him Khalik. Khalik Bhai. Ghaffar Bhai. Abdul Khalik. And similarly, when we give a good name to somebody and thereafter we Mention the whole name, pronounce it correctly. Ismail, not Ishmael. Khadija, not Khadija. Khadija, Dal. And every Muslim is able to pronounce Dal. None Muslims will find it difficult to pronounce Dal. Because there, there is only D. There is no D. But we learn the Quran, Alif, Ba, Ta, Sa, Jim, Ha, Ha, Dal. It's very easy for us to pronounce Dal, Khadija. Now the very people who say Khadija, when they read Urdu books, they will read Khadija. Like Ismail. When they call each other out, they will say Ismail. But when they read, they will say Ismail. Instead of saying Ibrahim, Ibrahim. Instead of saying Fatima, Fatima. We all know Arabic. Fa alif zabar fa, tazir ti, mim zabar ma, and hadian Fatima. 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 Such beautiful names that we are changing. If a non-Muslim was to say Fatima or Fatima, it's understandable. Khadija, it's understandable. Ishmael, understandable. But a Muslim who is able to pronounce it correctly, why, why should he change it? And in many cases, the names are shortened. The names are shortened and spoiled. So we need to be very, very careful in regards to the names, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the tawfiq, even our akabir. Even our akabir. Shaykh al-Hadith, Mawlana Zakariya sahib rahimahullah ta'ala, is from Kandla. Kandla. So either you will say Kandlawi or Kandlawi. Kandilavi is better, but it is mostly pronounced as Kandilvi. Now Kandalvi, Shaykhul Adis Mawlana Zakariya Sahib Rahmatullahi Ali does not come, come from Kandal. He comes from Kandila. So we need to pronounce the names correctly. So we need to give good names to our children, pronounce them, call them with their full names and also pronounce the names correctly so that 
they are able to acquire the barakat of those names. Every time we say to somebody, Abdullah come here, this is Abdullah. Abdullah is not feeling well today. Abdullah hasn't come today. If it is time of acceptance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make them, make him the servant of Allah in his true sense. This is Saleh, very Saleh, O oh Saleh. In the, in the, in, in, in the Arabic language or amongst the Arabs, when they call somebody who, whose name they don't know. So they will not say brother. They will not say ya akhi. Because ya akhi means nothing, my brother. They will say ya saleh. Ya saleh means oh the pious one. Saleh means pious. So they will say ya saleh, oh saleh. Or they will say ya Muhammad. Muhammad means the praised one. So someone they don't know if they want to call him from behind, they will say, Ya Saleh or Ya Muhammad. Why? Because if it is the time of acceptance, Allah will make him Saleh, Allah will make him Muhammad. So names have a very great significance in Islam. It is one of the rights of the children. If the father was not to choose a good name for the child, the child will be able to question the father on the day of Qiyamah. And it is the right of the father to name the child. Now it is up to the father whom he may give that right to. He may choose to exercise his own right and say, no, I will name the child. Or he may give that right to his wife. Or he may choose to share that right with the wife and say, we will make mashwara. Or he may choose to give that right to his father or his mother or his sheikh or his teacher or someone, someone pious. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the tawfiq to follow every beautiful teaching of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which guarantees success in this world and the hereafter. And from amongst those teachings is naming the child, giving the child good names. And if we have made a mistake in choosing names, then if, if we if our attention is drawn towards it, then we should not hesitate in changing the name. For example, many uh, people are given the name Parvez. Parvez. So Parvez is, is not an Islamic name. Parvez is the name of that person who tore the letter of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He was the uh, emperor of the Persian Empire. And when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's letter reached him, he tore the letter and he assassinated the Sahabi radhi Allahu anhu who took that letter to him. It is not a Muslim name, Parvez. Similarly, Munaf, Munaf. Now Munaf comes from the word Manaf. And Manaf was a, was an idol which the Quraysh used to worship during the time of Jahiliya. And one of the uh, forefathers of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his name was Abdu Manaf. Abde Manaf. Abdu Manaf. The servant of Manaf. Uzza was a, was a name of uh, an idol. So they would keep the name Abdul Uzza. So one of the forefathers of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's name was Abde Manaf. Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib ibn Abde Manaf ibn Hashim ibn Abd Manaf. So Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib ibn Hashim ibn Abd Manaf. So he was the grandfather of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's grandfather. So because of this name, Abde Manaf, people thought that Manaf is, is an Islamic name. So they started naming their children with Manaf and then that Manaf changed into Munaf. So if we are uh, Sayyid ibn Musayyib rahimahullah ta'ala says that my uh, my father or my 
say my my grandfather my grandfather went into the company of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam and nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said what is your name so he said my name is hazan now hazan is grief and hardship so nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said no you are not hazan you are not hazan you are sahl now this was not a shari'i instruction it was a mashwara from nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam and when nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam instructed somebody to do something from shari perspective it became compulsory and if nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave mashwara only opinion only then it was not necessary so nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave the mashwara that change your name from hazan to sahl hazan is hard hardship difficult and sahl is ease easy So he said, "No, I will not change the name that was given to me by my father. No problem. It was not not a shari matter. Now, Sayyid ibn Musayyib, the grandson of Hazan, he says that because my grandfather did not accept the opinion and mashwara of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam." our family has been experiencing grief and hardship till today that is the effect of names hakimul ummah maulana shahwali thanvi rahmatullah alay says that a person came to me and he said that this is my child and this child always remains sick we are we have tried everything so hakimul ummah rahmatullah alay said i asked what was the name of the child so he said that his name is kalimullah now kalim has two meanings in the arabic language one is kalim the one who talks the one who speaks so kalimullah musa alai salam is known as kalimullah because he communicated with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the mount sinai so his name is kalimullah and another meaning of kalim is the wounded one so when a person is wounded kalmun is wound so kalim the one who is wounded so hatim ibn umar rahmatullah alayhi said that change his name because kalim means the wounded one that's why he remains sick all the time so change his name to salimullah salim the one who remains safe salim is the safe one only his name was changed and he became healthy from kalimullah to salimullah only the name was changed and he became healthy so names do have effects may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the tawfiq to to understand these points and to also practice i urge everybody at home also to pay attention to these things give good names to children pronounce them correctly call them out with their full name full names uh, don't spoil the names and if we have made a mistake in choosing names then change those, those names may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi 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 wa ashabihi